this drilled elk. This is a nice Georgetown that had been spalled on the end, so I thought I'd do some um, blade core work with it. I'll have to work on both sides until I get contours. I'll start with this and maybe then I'll switch to the buffalo if I can. Um, maybe that'll help keep some of the later flakes intact. Soft leather support underneath the platform really helps and only hitting as hard as necessary. I'm gonna try to take some thin flakes off the cortex because that doesn't, it doesn't make as good a tool material. So I've, I've knocked a couple off. This one hinged a little bit, so I trimmed from the bottom. So the first we're just going to be getting rid of some of the cortex. Although it's thin, so I could probably chip that off and um, use that. I just want to take them as thin as possible to get rid of that cortex, but keep the stone. So maybe I can do another one. That'll probably won't go all the way, but then this one will come down and get the rest. Okay, good. Nipping with the hammer stone. That was just the right thickness because I got that cortex off. See how there's a little valley there so maybe I'll just I'll do some smoothers to keep this end of the core going and then I can take some bigger ones down here I almost went live to do this and then I thought well I'd probably be too distracted to other questions so man I'll do that another time I want to get good smushy support under that edge. Now yeah, this is getting nice and smooth. It goes up a little bit here, so maybe let's try to take that down from one there. I love making tools and stuff like this, but I don't I don't spend as much time on it because there's I try to conserve my rock for um, projectile points and knives mostly. Now we don't want our core to get too flat, so maybe now I can start working. Now that this face is pretty nice, for the most part, um, we'll start to work around this side and this side. This droops, droops down, 
So I'll need to get a careful hammer stone or punch flex here to create the proper angle. And since this is going uphill, I'll, I'll need to do some back and forth to create um, that contour on that side. Somebody drew a dovetail on there. I don't know who that was. Okay, so I'm, I want to put the punch up here, but that goes downhill. So I'm gonna probably gonna have to start back here. Oh no! Oh, I did a little bit more than I wanted to. Well, that stuff is flaky. <laughs> Somebody drew a line right on there where the <laughs> flake went. That's what caused it. Micro fractures from the ink pen. So I'll have a good one here, and then I'll have to just be crafty about getting that set up. Well, this is friendly material. So maybe get the hammer stone in here and take this down so I can get a way to get through that. That little spot right there I need to get rid of. I could power through that, but then I'd have to do more trimming on this bottom. Get up there. Well, let's work here a little bit and get set up, and just in case we have to use that platform. When you see really, really fine blades, there's a whole lot of other blades that you're not seeing to get to the point where the core can handle that. Sometimes it's better not to do overthink it. I need a little bit harder. Okay. That'll be able to make room to do something there. I'm going to have to trim up here a little bit more. Okay, see this ridge right here? That's very flat. Peter Viking would just put that up and pop a nice little one down there with his punch. But I'm not that great at blades. So let's try to just gently support it and try to get a little, little ridge runner off that and not break the flake. Mm. I got two. My platform crushed with this more a precise contact. I wouldn't get that double, double flake. Have to that. I 
that one had a crack on the off the cortex. It's another reason to try to skin it, get that cortex off. Although this one ought to be a nice, uh, like. Very nice and flat. Take a little one blend through there. That'll be a nice thin cutting tool. I really wish that one didn't do that. I'll try to get the point on there so I don't double. I'll just get my hand in here and try to not double um, hit that on the platform and get a... There. I follow that ridge pretty nicely. smooth but kind of exploded I'm still not in a spot where I've got the I sacrificed enough to get straight and tech blades all the way down so maybe we can take some of this off and then just work from the sharp sharp part of the core
See where my core was up and it wasn't supported? That's where that flake folded. You kind of want to have the right inward or get padding underneath your platform. I might go by face with this pretty soon. Try this for a couple of ridges. This is going way downhill, so I'll try trimming a few in here and then see what I can't do there. This is going to be a lot softer, so it's going to probably ho hopefully and keep oh, the flakes intact a little bit better. Okay, nice. Just needed more support off the platform. I'm going to double fold. If you watch Pellegrin with his punching in his blades and supporting on the inside, it's so awesome how he can keep those long blades when he pads up and keeps, the, um, keeps that contact on the edge. Okay, let's try the little one here and see what it does. It broke, but it was pretty heavy there. And that's a nice flake. I'm chipping a valley into this thing, chasing back and forth. Let's try a nice one right here. This is a random, random attempt at just getting flakes off. And then we'll probably bite face here in a little bit. That was nice. I don't want to get too sharp on the edge because that will hopefully I don't want it to cut into my horn. So when I do have a really sharp high edge like that. I'll just try not to hit too hard and get get it supported and just try to get one to clean in through here. Could have gone a little further. 
I was a little, I should have brought that, brought that back a little bit. that clean that out I'm gonna need to prepare this because this is going uphill here so I'm gonna do a little trimming. This will release. Let me try to get one. Now that's too heavy, and if I did get a flake, I'd roll too bad. And I want to keep this there, so maybe there's room to get just a nice one here. Yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit inward so I don't, if I break that much, I guess it's okay, but I'd prefer not to. If you don't like um, bifaces or you're having trouble with it and you wanna learn tools, these, just trying to knock flakes off of cores where you have mass and not worry about hitting acute edges, uh, probably a good learning tool. You don't have to use this horn, you can use something harder. I thought I was going to get organized in this thing and I, I didn't get my contour set up and I'm, now I'm just, I'm not cr creating an ideal situation to knock long blades off. I'm just gonna take one and clean through there. What's good about horn and wood is that you can be more stingy. It takes you more flakes often with a to get stuff thinned out, which is good if you want to just produce maximum cutting edge per volume of stone. The hammer stones, you, the harder you get, the more attrition there is in those respects, generally speaking. Keep in mind that anything I say, just put a disclaimer, generally speaking. Because 
until you, until people have similar experiences, it's it's hard to accept things. I try to keep myself honest as far as that goes. So, and for what it's worth. I'm just trying to make things smooth. Maybe I can, now that I've got those things edged, it'd be kind of fun to just clip these edges off. get a nice flake here. 26 minutes, jeez. Well, that one broke with good support. If it were a stiffer chert, it wouldn't, but I, I'm, I don't like that I'm breaking these flakes. I'm hitting too hard, I guess. <laughs> and I'm just chipping downhill. Oh well. Let me just try this hand support and barely hitting it. I need a wooden striker. I jammed that right into my almost nether regions. That would have been funny. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Let's try this. I don't know why I didn't start off with that. Have you guys seen that video of that Indian guy notching that, that point underneath striking? Looks like it's got a wooden mallet and he's hitting the preform. It's heavy enough. It's taking the energy. And it's heavy enough that the shock waves are not interfering with his shell pop-outs. Uh, man, I'd like to give that guy some hard antler and turn him loose at a dollar a piece and see what he can do. That was really crazy. Yes, okay. The wooden is where it's at. I obliterated everything on that termination because that flake went wide. But now, let me see if I can't keep more stuff intact. I don't, I don't know why I didn't start that way. Yeah. I mean, this is gonna be fun. Yep. So use horn and you want to keep the flakes intact on the softer material, just hit with wood if you want to. Let's take a little flake here and then just try to punch that ridge off just for fun. Hope it doesn't run too bad. That's not ideal here.
Now maybe we should tidy this up so that we can maybe not break it. This will make a saw. Some blade technologies, they're going for ideal blades and there's tons of waste. And you wonder why they did it, because they're, I guess it's because they're shipping out stuff and they're, the buyers demand excellence and they've got enough flint to serve it up on a platter just like they like it. Well, that's kind of ugly. They wouldn't be hiring me. I'd be, I'd be out getting flint with this nonsense I've got going on. Of course, I don't know what I'm making. Well, it's too bad we don't we're not just turned this way to come back i guess i could do that then i have to shorten it up okay let's get one flake here see that nice ridge let me try to keep that intact with the wooden striker it's going downhill so let's just try to do a nice short one Actually, I should clean here first because if it expands then the flake is going to break like those other ones did. So let me try to demonstrate one proper uh, blade and then we'll just go by face and blow this thing up. Well, I hope the algorithm doesn't put me on a list for saying that. There's a guy once who, who they called the FBI because he had uh, ran out of his truck and straight for the bathroom and he declared that he was going to do that. And they, they called the authorities on him. I hope he got everything finished before they stormed the big stinky pal room. I could see doing some teeny little micro blades with this. With just little swings and Just barely hitting. And the one thing about the buffalo, you don't damage. Antler, you can cone. This thing you can, if the angle is not right, you can hit it multiple times and kind of not fudge up your edge too bad. Kind of steep here. I'm smelling that. That's, not, that's a sign to stop doing that. What are you doing down there, fella? Sorry about that. Okay. We kind of failed there because I tried to do just another another flake to just get to there. I don't want to hit it hard because then it'll hinge out. Let's give it a, just a reliever right there. Okay, now we got it. See that little hammerstone flake? Now I can do just a teeny one. Right off the corner. I should be able to. Turn out loud. There. Dang it. 
I got it. But it kicked through this area and now my blade is gonna go right there. So let's try to do one intact small ridge runner. Check my mission. I'm gonna use my abo file. A gritty sandstone on a big slab, I can I can shape and, and file antler so fast. It gets gummed up, and you gotta get the antler out of there. But when I lived in Arkansas, I just to go down to the creek and select the water cleaned coarse sandstones, and I could I could shape stuff in no time. Well, this is a modern excuse due to my elevated status and my sense of deserve it compromise which I may or may not deserve but I can rationalize it okay so let's get our little flake and then let's just chew this thing up with the, the antler and plant this thing down you want to have it support right off the edge hit it just as hard as possible slow Oh, didn't go. You hit a little harder. No. Nope. Right. How come it's not working now? This is ridiculous. That could be used, but that's not very good. All right. I could make a nice, turn this into a nice little core, but I'm figuring out that on this Georgetown, I'm gonna have to have way better contours. Let's put back on the elk and teach this thing who's boss. I'm gonna to wanna to make a point out of this, since this is a nice piece of Georgetown. I can only justify playing around so much since I don't know what I'm doing. Here's a good time to do intentional overshots. Or unintentional hinges. So many hits. That's a little curved. That's okay. Trimmer flakes aren't going. When you've got a heavy edge, just move it over the hammer stone.
my contact area is pretty broad, so I'm using more energy than I would need to if I had that tip addressed a little better. So we're, we're, we have a nice width to turn this into a decent hog eye clovis. Hog eye style. It's kind of steep. This will be our tip. Creating a less steep angle on that side that I ineffectively burinated. I need to flick it there, so just use the hammer stone. Oops. When you hit once more than once with a hammer, when you hit once with a hammerstone, it doesn't get what you want. You don't want to just start whacking away on it, hit it again. Let's do a nice little one at this corner. Let's switch to the smaller punch. White tail. Honeysuckle. I set low. The shafts get too long, gets weird for me. Some people sit higher and they can kind of get away with it. Is that better? It's 42 minutes and I haven't made a close point yet. Now I need something in between this honker and the smaller honker. This should be about right. I was worried about that wrapping too much since I was so low. So that little flake is just fine. That'd make a nice little tool. Trimming. Little punch is easier for trimming. I'm just going to use hand support at this point. That's a nice little flake. They don't all have to be over shots. You need contours. But they, they, they preferred to finish with those. Um, one, because it if you're wrapping stuff and you know that you're going to do it for a tip and you're clever enough about keeping your edges straight, it really makes a really quick way to get a, get a lot of good tool material off of a core, a like preform core, right? which I assume that they're saving some of those flakes and that's why they're doing it. And then just the aesthetic of having that cool unrefined sort of, I don't want to say unrefined, but you know, minimalist kind of tidy look. And I'll put words in their mouth about that because they're not here to defend themselves. I'm going to turn this a little bit. You can feel when you've got a divot and my, my punch has got a crack in it, so actually I'm not going to turn I'm just going to try to turn it a little bit. Because I'm going to have to pull it and then put it back in because I've got a crack and it's hard to get off there. That's good tool material.
Okay, so I've got this square edge there. I'm gonna have to fix this. So I'm gonna, and see how it droops down, so I'm gonna need to get some flakes here, and then I can fix this and get another one along that ridge. To fix it, come up here, drop my angle, knock a flake off, and I'll see that angle change. And I have a really good spot to stick my punch if I can get it in there. Get it up in there. All right. If you do this, it's deceiving. If you start getting good, if you get uh, your wide biface flattened down with some of these flakes, you kind of have to time it to where you're a little bit narrower because the tendency is to make these wider clovises with that pattern. And you realize it's flat and wide. And then when you get your shape on there, you're doing a lot of contouring and obliterating that. So it's best to just kind of, you want to have things kind of organized, but you can be narrower than you think and thicker at this stage to get a, one of those hog eyes to look half right. This platform is rolled. It looks like I could put it there and do the same thing, but I can't because this goes up and is heavy. So I'd need to, and I don't have room in there with a punch. I'll just get the little hammer stone. Way it rained on my hammer stone, but this is ludicrous. See how that lowered that? Grind back. It's really important to know when you're moving an edge and then you do your grinding. I see so many people who are, who constantly grind down and what that does is that's just gonna, it, it's gonna raise your platform. So if you need a little movement, you know to where you're, look exactly where you're gonna put your tool and then grind it to help yourself out just a little bit. to do a little fix into my edges. Now these edges are all, they're kind of steep, but I ought to be able to work up here a little bit. And then where it gets too steep, I'll just take one down from the tip a little bit. Now this is steep and broad, so that goes across, since this edge is so low, it might lose more width than I want to. So I'll come over here and just take some thickness off this edge. Make it look more like a biface and not a rejected amateur core. Kind of work on a tip, I like to hold it up a little bit more usually. It's good to practice instead of isolating platforms with a pressure flaker. If you can pick the corners of these punches and change angles, it'll teach you a lot more about the um, pinning as you go about it than if you're setting everything up with pressure and it'll save you just a ton of time. There goes that square edge. Now if I just took a picture, wait, let me get one more and then I'll take a picture of that side. And even though it's fat, it'll look like, it'll look cool.
positioning. I'm scrunching down because I want that platform raised up. And I knew when I did it, I set it low, and then I scrunched down to build it up. It's a, it's a, it's a good way to sort of get your platform set. Now we take a picture of it. And never mind that it's all mangled up on this side. <laughs> I chip a lot of stuff to the to the refinement and idealized shapes because you can you can make a, a stage of a lot of these artifacts are they go through a life cycle and they idealize perfectly refined and resharpened um, specimens that have all of the the key features of what people recognize as a classic type. M most of the time they didn't they didn't use them like that. They're kind of you know using stuff like this. Maybe they they flute at this stage too. So. Let me kind of show how it look. Clovis biface, and then the biface is a core. Some of these bifaces could possibly relate to a strategy of, of wedge-shaped core technology where they're taking blades off of it and then working from the ends and corners and then they're, and once they get plattery, they do these big overshot flakes on some of the Clovis um, stuff. And then they'll just decide, you know, they'll put a big flute, which is also just a flake they can use. And then, um, and then they just keep on using them and reworking them as knives. And then they get smaller, they can reform them and use them as dart points. That's my idea anyhow. So let's sort of make this thing look like something they would have done. So basal thinning, because we're square, because we had that ineffective punch flake to set up that core top, which was a fail. So let's take, take change the angle on that and start thinning. And this would be like, um, early stage basal thinning could be incorporated. If it works out, it sometimes it's left in. And, you know, you don't have to just finish a clovis preform, do an interline technique, and take off of a two-finish flute. Sometimes they stage these early early um, thinning flakes into the finished point. Let's get one off the... Oops. One off the... Oops. We'll get one off the bottom there. So, that's a tool. And we can chip the rest of the square edge off in a jiffy. There we go. Change the angle. Get down. Another one. Okay. See how sharp that's getting on the corner, at least there? Now, we'll have to get another one here because that's very steep. So we'll just do a little. We're going to look for a spot to come back. Okay, that really helped. Okay. And that's the same thing as the punch, but that was too steep, so the hammer stone really comes in handy there. I'm going to turn back. take this punch off and get it like this so I can use a sharp area at some point. That's getting stubborn for me, so I'm just going to take a little bit off the side and it down. Okay, that would... That really helped me. Actually, it's just a little bit of length. All these can be used as flakes depending on how far you're away from material source. The further you get away from material sources and you see mobile people, then you can look at efficiency and platforms. and You, you can get rid of all the quarry stuff and all of the beginning nap or practice stuff and you can nail it down to you know you're carrying stuff so you're going to be careful about the late stage you know flakes and keep you know make sure that you don't just shatter everything and you could use this thing for a while and just need a flake so you got plenty of time to think about where the next one's going to come off you know just sit down and clean up all day with this big rocks like we do or lots of us do so 
that's a kind of decent cutting edge. I scrunch isolate raise lateral grind load Oops. load and that was nice because that's going to be our tip then I just retouch this on the other side and I have a poor man's fulsome Sometimes I'll make a platform and then the flake will go right to that. Even though I don't want to hit that side, I'll make a, a platform on that side. See how it went right to my platform on my other side? Right here. Or, or a possible platform. Anybody want to buy about 35,000 early stage Clovis by Asus? being more silly than normal today. So now, um, it's kind of flat so we can, because it's it has an area of thickness there, if I set up a flake there and get back edge support, then that's gonna really wrap. So knowing how to trim opposite edges, doing things like putting those little Possible platforms are changing the edge enough to where you know you can control the amount of dive that you're going to get. It's just something that they were really good at. And the benefit of that is that they're, these intact flakes are, are really good tools. So possible platform there. And we've got a, a little ridge. It's got, it gets a little heavy, but I think I can set this up and use a little bit more leather support and punch to it. Boy, my stomach is growling. If you heard that. Hope everyone's doing good. That's a little low. Let's try our new Buffalo Smushy Pad. Oops. Oops, I just clipped my platform. When it does that, you have to look, and it could be a ratty area. You know, you're moving up, and it's moving off the spot you're contacting. So since that happened, let's go to our possible platform and look what we did. We have option A fail, but it only helped us for option B to do the same thing. And I think that um, the reason why so many artifacts look really controlled is because that they're, there's options for failure for success, especially when you have width requirements that are highly variable. And yeah, you don't care that much. Oops. I've got to turn on this. There you go. Oops. I have to grind my horn, I think. Or antler. I got it. Let me turn it around because I can already tell I'm skating on thin ice.
talking to somebody the other day about the sound in flint napping and i'm fairly convinced if you put noise canceling headphones on me I, and had me do stuff it would be awful or feel it feel deadening gloves it'd be even worse Find a comfy spot. Yep, that seems about right. Hold it there, don't move. I could just turn the punch around, but I said I have a crack. So it's binding up and twisting. I don't want to crack it more. So I have to get that sorted out. I got a nice flake, but I didn't, I know what it did. There's a little ridge that I didn't fasten it down despite reading glasses. So that's, it's not going anywhere until later. So we'll do some edge, some edging. We've got everything sort of, it looks like a thin ad, so we're gonna have to get to center line a little bit here. So floating, trimming, moving stuff around, dropping the angle, just taking little flakes. The punch compared to percussion can really address these areas nicely and cleanly because you're not, you're not missing anything. I think we've got enough width here, even though it's gonna wrap to do to do one. Oh golly! I left my punch out, but this is ridiculous. I've got another little bump on there. Sometimes you gotta crunch super hard. And I turned away, I didn't want to. Well, I buggered that up. I'm into my bag, my new bag, and I need to be lower and padded. So let me throw my buffalo pad down there, pull closer. Something is energy robbing horribly right now. I'm blaming the new bag and the angle. Oh, that feels better. Yep, they're popping off there. Yeah, I was soaking into that pocket too high. So that was what was hitting so hard. Watch me totally redeem myself now. Okay, I'm gonna go fast. Away. Yeah, set up to clean up that other face and we'll maybe do some late stage buffalo punching and flute this thing and be done in 50, 105, probably by 115. This part's not going to be helpful, I apologize. Unless you get a zoom and a pause and a big TV and more patience than me. Let's 
get, there we go. We need to get through this. Um, mangled up spot. And we don't want to get any thinner than that at that stage where we're at. So we're going to have to do a lot of just trimming to get set up for the finishing finale. This thing would have been carried a couple hundred miles and sliced and diced up camel, a quarter of a giant sloth, possibly descaled an armadillo, skinned a deer, cut 152 cattails, and threatened some dude on the next ridge. I try not to play up the acts of war and combat because it's people romanticize Native Americans and what they do and everybody's got to have a reason to think why something is a, a club or a human point or a, and there's conflict in the past just like uh, past just like today but um there's um there's no need to dwell on it actually there's not that much conflict today people don't arm wrestle or settle things outside anymore they get on the keyboard and straighten out the cairns Maybe deservedly so, but it's somewhat pitiful, huh? Okay, we're, we're getting things organized enough where this has a chance to turn out pretty nice, even though it looks still like sort of a mess right now. Should I do two parts? Because we're already at 108. Maybe I should just scrap the, lat the second half of this. Which... So our core was... Even though I did a lot of experimenting and just didn't didn't help myself in any way during eating those ends and doing all that stuff, uh, the the length is fairly well preserved, and dimensionally for a hog eye style clovis, this sucker is right in the ballpark, uh, maybe even a large side. So let's take a, a brief break, check on Rico, answer that noise in my belly, and regroup with maybe. A little bit more seriously to show the late stage bison horn full face flicking on this. <laughs> 